Hey, it's Lucas from Bardscraft. I have just reached 50,000 subscribers, so it's time to answer 50 very important questions. Let's begin by... Magnus Solberg says, congratulations. My question, what is something you used to do but don't do it anymore in your crafts? I don't use dill as flocking anymore. That's something I used to do. It was a very peasant level, but it worked. Now I use my homemade flocking instead. Sid Vicious, we all know you love your oats. What's your other favorite food and how would you incorporate its packaging into your next build? Favorite food? Perhaps smoked salmon? Eggs. And something on the side. So the egg cartons could be used to make bricks, for example. I think I might try that in an upcoming video. Cardboard bricks. Yeah. Clemens Voigt, are you DMing and what's your campaign about? Yes I am. My favorite campaign I'm running is called The Herd of the Corpse Lord. Basically it's a dwarven necromancer who raises undead wildlife, deer, wolves, the plague elk was a boss they defeated. In the campaign the only two players get to fight lots of undead, fiend and other cozy things. Very good. Try keeping up asks, is there a tool I would like to acquire that is resourceful but not necessarily cheap money-wise? Yes, I would like to acquire an airbrush. An airbrush would be very convenient for terrain projects and also for painting miniatures. Spaghetti and meeples. How do you decide on the stats for the monsters you create? Well, I just make it up. Usually I use the longsword as a good tool to understand how difficult a monster is. Ask yourself how many good longsword hits would it take to kill these monsters, and how many longswords worth of pain does it deal to you if it hits you. I also try to include lots of interesting features and condition effects for attacks and such. Adrian Fatschi. What did motivate you to start crafting your own miniature? What was the first miniature you crafted, and how did it go? I wanted to craft a miniature because I didn't want to buy one. The first mini I made must have been the iron golem thing. It went quite well. After making the iron giant mini, I understood that you can do pretty epic things with little materials. Echorome, you never used to talk in your old videos. Were you worried about your voice or accent or something? No, I wasn't. I was just a coward. I was afraid of the camera and the microphone, so I made very good excuses so I didn't have to admit that to myself. It's actually funny how ridiculous your excuses can get when you try to cover your weaknesses. This might be aimed towards you, sitting there behind your computer, doing nothing productive. Okay, next one. Um, Alex F. What crafts are you most proud of and which types of projects make you the most nervous to make? Yeah, the most proud projects of Bardcraft must be... The Dragon's Gorge, the Gate to Necropolis, let's see, I'm looking at my shelf. The Elven Stronghold and the Summer Grove Ruins. Projects that make you nervous. Well, terrain where you can't hide your mistakes with lots of flocking and such. Very scary. Rosen Graveyard, can you tell about how you plan and record your videos for YouTube? Yeah, I don't plan that much. I just craft and then talk. Sometimes I craft and do a voiceover afterwards. And in the end of the video I usually plan some kind of a narrative thing if it is possible. That makes the showcase of the terrain much easier and less boring. Any advice? Yeah, remember that YouTube is almost entirely an entertainment platform. It doesn't matter if your content is objectively very good, if it's not entertaining. Some people say I'm entertaining. Okay, Philip Biati, is crafting still a hobby level for you right now, or has it become more full-time? Yes, it is full-time. I think this is my full-time job now, unfortunately and luckily. Very good question by Noah Price. How many terrain pieces do you have? Well, let's take a look. Okay, on this shelf we have approximately 15 crafts. Alright, I did a bit of digging. In this box I believe we have approximately 10 peasant level crafts. Here we have 
Dungeon, no, cave tiles. Dungeon tiles. Lava stairs. Castle walls, I think. A very simple but quite good looking pyramid. Here we have some forest things that I should probably throw out. A box of old cave tiles I should probably throw away as well. We are moving to the kitchen. Under the fridge I have hidden quite a lot of terrain. The peculiar underdark scatter terrain. Frost scatter terrain. That one is pretty good actually. Then we have the orc scatter terrain. This one is actually real bone. Here I have also used dill as flocking. As you can see the dill is okay but very peasant level. Okay, here we have my glowing necrom pillar thingies. Let's see how they work. These glow in the dark, very epic. And up here, above the fridge, I have about one, two, three dioramas that are not epic enough for display. Okay, according to my rough calculations, that should be about 38 builds in total. I didn't count individual pieces, but Terrain builds as a whole. Moving on, next question by Zombie Dad. Would you consider changing the channel name to Bark's Craft? Very good suggestion. I might do that actually. Hey, welcome to Bark's Craft. Today we're crafting with Bark. How does that sound? Patroller brought what music do you like to listen to? Well, mainly I listen to Nordic folk metal, such as Amon Amarth, Turisas, Enciferum, and the tour. Yeah, those are very metal and very epic. Next we have Thomas Hoffman. What's your favorite RPG? When I still played computer games, my favorite ones were Kingdom of Amalur, The Reckoning, Lord of the Rings Online. By the way, don't play MMORPGs, those are life stealers. And Gothic. Yeah, those were quite good games. But now when I don't play those games anymore, my favorite RPG has to be Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, Lemonhead, Bardicraft, where do you get your inspiration from? I think I get much of my inspiration from all of the gaming I did when I was younger. Also, I get lots of inspiration from planning D&D campaigns and just in general from being creative. At least I believe I'm creative. And another source of inspiration, sometimes I get inspired by watching real medieval buildings. Looking at castles and churches make you want to build them in miniature. Yuri Nujiten, do you enjoy winter or summer more? Definitely summer. When it's summer you can hide mistakes on your terrain with green grass flocking. And you can add little flowers and everything. You could even go outside and paint. Yeah, perhaps that's something I should do. Painting elves in the woods. Question by Devin. You mentioned in the comments of an earlier video that you have problems talking for long times. I have something similar to that. How do you deal with it? How do you deal with it if you're DMing an RPG? Well, I don't have to deal with it as much. Usually the problem is just that I'm still somehow instinctively scared of the microphone and the camera, even if I don't care. I don't care at all. I could even do this video shirtless because it's so hot in here. Well, I'll put the shirt back on when I get into the woods where I film the rest of this video. But let's do some more questions in here. Familie Werksteg, how many packs of oats do you go through in a week? I eat approximately exactly 100 grams of oats per day, so one kilogram package of oats means 0.7 packs of oats per week. Usually a bit more. Dino Buckwell has a very good and convenient question. What is the best way to consume oats? Uh, I'll show you. Might as well do this. This is very relevant for the channel. I carefully measure the oats on a scale. A healthy amount of sunflower seeds, water, then salt, and berries. We're good to go. Okay, the oats are consumed. One more question before I get out of here. Johnny the AI, what was your favorite experiment 
what crafting experiment turned out the greatest. My favorite crafting experiment was my homemade flocking, when I cut up the hemp rope and successfully made quite good flocking to use for my terrain builds. At the time when I tried it I hadn't seen it in other videos, so it was kind of like an experiment for me. Worked out great. Now let's get out. Okay, we are in the woods. Next question, Andrea Risk. Would you ever consider making 40k terrain? Yeah, definitely. If I run a D&D campaign in a post-apocalyptic setting, I think I can pull off some 40k builds that work great for that. Other than a good chef's knife, what are tools or materials that you would recommend a peasant level crafter invest in to improve the quality or scope of their project? Tool, perhaps, if you already haven't got one, you should get a craft knife with exchangeable blades. Those are much better than the cheap ones. Then materials, get bark and XPS foam if you can get. Use EVA foam if you can't find XPS foam. Master Gollum asks, how many hours do you spend crafting each week? I would say about 15 hours. Most of the time I use for work, work is for editing videos and being confused all the time. Yeah. Federico asks, do you have other hobbies besides building terrain? The introducing of more a crafting knife made me think you of a bushcrafter miniature painter. Yeah, I could certainly be a bushcrafter. That is perhaps one of my potential future hobbies. Right now I do biking. I got a pretty decent bike recently. I go to the gym and also on my hobby list there is sailing and general sea activities. Deximari always looks forward to my videos. Thank you. You cracked me up. My question to you is, do you work out? You look like you could bench press a fridge. Well, fridges aren't that heavy, but yeah, I do work out in the gym, as I said. I'll try the fridge once I get home. On the same note, Cory Shrock asks, what's your workout routine? I do a full body workout every second day. The main lifts are deadlift, bench, squat and overhead press. Those are the most epic lifts. Jay asks, Lucas, what brand of minis do you prefer to use for D&D and your tabletop games? Well, I don't have any particular preferred mini, but I do want to stay away from Reaper minis, Nozzle's marvelous miniatures. They are pretty poop in quality. Instead, I want decent minis that require assembly. We should have taken this inside. Tsundre, how do you store your terrain? How do you organize your crafting room? My terrain, I store it wherever it fits, on shelves, in strange compartments, in my old house, well, apartment. I organize my crafting room by hiding stuff under the table. On top of the table I have a small box with the essential tools and an even smaller box with all my mini paints. That's pretty much it. What kind of tree has thick bark? bark? because in my area there are only trees with very thin bark. The bark I use in my crafts is from pine trees. You should find a big, preferably bigger tree than this, and then you can take off small bark bits without damaging it, or then potentially you find a big dead tree, so you don't do any harm to nature. Here at the bottom of the tree we can actually find some small bits that might be good for small terrain projects, if you don't want to rip it off, like this. Ha! Bark. Sean Thatcher, a while ago you said in one of your videos it's been a while since you built something you either really loved or were excited about. What are your favorite things to build and why? Favorite things to build are things with lots of grass and stonework. Imagine a ruined castle on top of a grassy hill. What can go wrong? It will always look very good. Jesper asks, what is the miniature you are the most proud or happy with? That has to be the Thought Slayer Santa. It was fun and easy to paint, and the theme was very epic. Anything made by Games Workshop, you just base coat and dry brush and edge highlight. You're done. Shaheen Arian, which is your self-made favorite build? That has to be the Golden Dragon. It was quite fun, but a big challenge to build it. What I like about it the most is that the templates were quite easy to follow, so you can craft one as well. Johnny boy, how have you kept your channel such a hidden gem from our fellow Finns? 
I'm sorry. Perhaps it's your fault. Perhaps you have been browsing the wrong kind of content. Perhaps I should be advertising my peasant level builds in Fantasy Appellate. Sandy Ravitch, Ravash. Why did you start making YouTube videos? I think I always dreamt of having a job that is more on my terms. And also I had fantasies about being the idea guy for games and such, so now I make my own ideas, my own videos, and if I fail, it is my fault that I fail. If I succeed, it is my fault that I succeed. It is the best way. But the main reason is I want to avoid the 9 to 5 wage cockery. Alfred asked, what was it that first opened your eyes to diorama building slash pen and paper in general? Well, I just started playing D&D after my friend Kalle suggested that we try it out. Then, after one or two years, I watched some Black Magic craft videos and started crafting. This guy asks, can you showcase all of the projects you have done? That would be epic. That would be epic. I think I'll do that when I get home. I put all my terrain bits all of the good-looking terrain bits and my minis on the biggest table I can find. Then I pan the camera over it dramatically. Perhaps I add background music. <laughs> background music. Smiley Smiles asks, where do you get the music for your videos from? Most of the music I use I get from YouTube. The channel name is Windswept Fantasy Music. I can use that for free in my videos, as long as I link to it. Kalathas asks, are you better folk from Western Finland? You have a weird mismatch accent that sounds funny. Well, thanks. I am very fun. Indeed, I am a Swedish-speaking Finn, but it is up for you to judge. If I am better folk. Better folk means better people. For any fund, how do you get foam? I go to Bugmax and there I buy my XPS foam. Bugmax is a hardware and building material store. If you have trouble finding XPS foam, you should check out Black Magic Craft's video on the subject. That should help pretty much. John asks, have you ever played Warhammer? No, I haven't, but if somebody could send me like 200 minis, that would be great. Then I could give it a shot. Kalian Enred dares me to build peasant level sewers. No, I want to make them. Also, single most used terrain piece. That has to be dungeon tiles. Dungeon tiles are, perhaps, every second game on the table. This autofocus is doing nothing. What the hell? Demon Blade asks, what's my strategy to motivate myself to keep making consistently? I find myself getting stuck, blocked, if I don't have something specific to make for my campaign. Well, I don't keep myself motivated always. I just do. Motivation is emotion-based, which means it is unreliable. You can't always rely on yourself to be motivated. Instead, rely on discipline. Discipline always wins in the long run. So, when I don't feel like crafting, I do it anyway. Then, sometimes, in the middle of the craft, I get motivated, because things start looking too epic. And also, don't just do something for your campaign. Make something you want to do, and then make your campaign about that. Shibok, I'm not even gonna try. Could you please tell us approximately build time for each project? Or do you think this would scare some people off? Perhaps it would scare somebody. I usually build about 20 hours for one project, but it's hard to tell because I do so much video editing and filming in between. I can give some examples. The Summer Grove Ruins, probably like 30 hours of work. The Mimic build, 3 hours of work. Gate to Necropolis, let's say 15 hours. Dragon's Gorge, 5 hours. It depends very much on how much detail you have. The Matthias Ra. Hi, do you enjoy reading literature? And if you do, any fantasy book recommendations? I do read books, but not as much as I want to. I haven't read much fantasy besides The Hobbit. Otherwise, I have read self-improvement books and spiritual thingies. I have to keep moving. There's lots of mosquitoes here in the forest that want to eat me alive. Next question by Time Guy. Do you think it's worth to make terrain for D&D? Then there is an explanation that I don't want to read out loud. But yeah, I think it's worth to make it. Of course, I have to say that because I do it for a living. But 
it is very much worth it in the end. You challenge yourself, you build something beautiful, you play on it 10 minutes and then you forget about it. But you will always have it on your shelf collecting dust. But seriously, you can fix the entirety of the problem by starting wargaming. After I started playing Frostgrave, I got so much use of my terrain that I even got more inspired to build more. Apply animator, would you ever consider doing some more advanced level builds? As in maybe using green stuff and doing some sculpting? Yes, I would like to do more advanced builds. As you might have noticed in the recent videos, my content has been less peasant level and more epic craft. Also, now that I got a better camera, I can get better shots of my builds, which is a bit motivating. Piach asks, why Bardscraft? You sometimes played the guitar in the movies, but your musical background were in too many questions. Yeah, I want to play the guitar more, but right now my voice is failing me. As you might hear, well, you don't hear it as much because I edit it away and I retake most of my things three to five times and even more. It's a bit annoying, but I try to remain stoic about the entire situation. Tom Warner wonders if I ever used or thought about using resin to create things like water. Yes, I want to make more water. For example, I want to continue on the Dragon Shore build where the dwarves wage war against the dragons. More hills, water waves, cliffs, dragons, dragon skeletons and angry dwarves. Florian has a very relevant question. What is the coolest race in D&D? The most coolest, badass race are the dwarves, of course. The most beautiful and glorious are the elves, specifically the wood elves. Okay, Pancake Pancake, will you do a video of showcasing your minis? Yes, I will. When I have painted more minis, there will certainly be more minis involved in the channel. Well, those were all the questions. I hope you had a good time. I certainly didn't. Too many mosquitoes here. This was a very bad plan. Well, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.